are you surprised that the Home, Sec that the Home Secretary has been sacked? No, uh, not at all. And um, I think I differ with uh, what you and Sam have just been saying, Julia. I, I like a lot of what Suella says, just like I liked a lot of what Liz Truss said. But, you know, one thing Mrs Thatcher understood, which a lot of sort of people who purport to be Thatcherites today don't um, understand is, is how hard government is. Anyone can say stuff. But actually using the Whitehall machine to deliver stuff is much harder. And well, particularly if, you, if Suella, your Whitehall machine you... is the Home Office, because it's virtually impossible to get well, them to do true. anything. Well, absolutely. And every, almost every other government in the world, Julia, has a Home Office in two separate units. They have a borders agency focusing on immigration issues, and then they have another department which looks at policing and terrorism. Yeah. Why, almost uniquely in the world, we have this mega department, which we know is dysfunctional, trying to do two unrelated things. You know, no wonder the department is a graveyard for ministerial careers. It, it wasn't fair on Suella. It hasn't been fair on other Home Secretaries to be given the job of running those two things. And particularly, you know, when someone hasn't been around the block, hasn't done a number of ministerial jobs, they just aren't experienced enough to do a job like that. And so... It's partly also why I do welcome David Cameron's return. You know, when you have rookies in charge of departments like the Home Office, unable to get a grip of them, and you have some of your most experienced people on the scrap heap at 50, not used, you know, it's part of the reason why government doesn't work in this country anymore. Yeah, I mean, again, just because he's not Prime Minister anymore, people say well, he's, you know, he's, he's competent, he's managerial. There was a lot of praise, actually, at the time for David Cameron when he was Prime Minister. He, was, he ran, you know, he was very, very good at, you know, at, at delegating and, uh, and kept order. I mean, I have to say, having been a political journalist during the Tony Blair, Gordon Brown years, the TBGBs, the morning briefing calls against each side from number 10 to number 11, we just didn't see any of that when we had, certainly, the, uh, uh, the, the, the coalition years with the Lib Dems. It was kept, you know, very... I mean, sensible. I mean, people may not have agreed yeah. with a lot of things they did or some of the things they did, but they, they just got on with the job. That said, an awful lot of the things that we're grappling with right now is dealing with the problems that they introduced during that time. But let, let's talk about James Cleverley because it's a very popular figure with uh, the uh, Conservative Party members as polled by Conhome, which you, you, you're the founder of, um, representing ordinary grassroots Tories. Very popular figure. He's very, a very, very, very pleasant, friendly man. Um, and he's yeah. been seen to have done a very good job as foreign secretary. But we all know that really foreign affairs is run by number 10. It's not run by uh, the foreign secretary. We know that. He's been very popular. He's been put into the home secretary role. It is interesting that actually, I think in, in the modern era, Theresa May is the only home secretary to move directly from that job to number 10. And what a wonderful success she made of that move. Um, <laughs> it, that actually, it is usually the death of careers. Next, Julia. Watch that for that one. <laughs> yeah, but it's not normally very good for a political career because foreign office you can sort of swan around and you, and if there's a war you get to sort of make rather sort of patriotic statements and you go and shake hands with important people. Home office you're basically blamed everything every time something goes wrong and something goes wrong pretty much every day. Yeah, and look, there's lots of talk about James Cleverley's future. If, as is expected, and I don't think anything that's happened today will change this the Tories lose the next election. Um, James Cleverley is favoured, probably favourite at the moment, to be the next Tory leader. But um, I don't know particularly why uh, um, Rishi Sunak has given James Cleverley this job, but perhaps it's to test him you know, in a really frontline job where it's policy choices are hard, where you really have to uh, be a skilled minister. You're, you're completely right about the foreign secretary job. It's perfect for David Cameron because you know he he'll be he'll play the part very well of representing Britain on the world stage. But policy is created in number ten by the Prime Minister. Mm. Big decisions are taken by heads of government meeting at summits, talking directly to each other. The Foreign Secretary does the preparatory stuff, but they don't actually take any big decisions. No. And so what we get now with James Cleverley at the Home Office is can he relate to the public on some of the stuff you've been talking about this morning? Is he going to retain the strong line that Suella Brubman rightly had, but back it up with policy detail? And will he survive all the 
the, the, the mess ups that come out of that extraordinary dysfunction. Yeah. I, I think if you're when Rishi Sunak, how will he, hand, how listen, he handle them? Don't think that. I think if you're Rishi Sunak and you're way down in the polls in terms of popularity among Tory party members, and we've got James Cleverly at the top, what better cunning weeds of a move is it to put James Cleverly into the, 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 that job? where you're actually going to basically cause him uh, some damage, I would have thought. But, look, let's come back to the decision to sack Home Secretary Stella Bravman. Because to, for the Prime Minister to have called in Sir Mark Rowley, the Met Chief, last week and say, you know, for an hour, can't, made him cancel in a speech he was making, to call him in to basically say, I think you should cancel this, uh, you know, ban this march, mm -hmm. I think there's going to be trouble. For him to, um, say, announce today from Number 10 that there are going to be new laws to try and protect the streets of Britain from extremist marches, I mean, he's basically admitting that Suella Braverman was right. And he's giving in to the likes of Labour Shadow Health Secretary West Street. He says Suella entirely to, was entirely to blame for the events on Saturday with the, you know, the, the extreme right-wingers, the football hooligans and the, some of the scuffles they got into. Um, pouring petrol on the flames, he said. The idea that those men, they were largely men, uh, were, were going to sit at home drinking cups of tea on Saturday and not go to, uh, to Whitehall, to the Cenotaph, um, is, is, is for the birds, isn't it? Hasn't he just admitted that she was right and he sacked his Home Secretary for telling the truth? Look, I, I, think, I think Labour are getting away with murder at the moment, Julia. The, the fact is that Labour have a big problem with their Muslim vote. They, you know, let, let's be absolutely direct about it. Uh, Keir Starmer's really upset an incredibly important Labour constituency and this is an opportunity for him to reconnect with that Muslim vote by kicking the Tories hard on what you know the Palestinian issue. So if anyone is playing politics with this issue, it's the Labour Party. And you wouldn't know that from the BBC. Labour get away with it scotch free, and it, you know, it, it's, it's a disgrace. Um, but look, I, I, I largely agree with you. I don't quite know why Suella Braverman was sacked, but only because her offences have been multiple, really. You know, I actually thought her remarks about the homeless last week, that it was somehow a lifestyle choice. That was just, Sort of thing you'd expect from Alan Bastard, you know, the, the comedian of the 1980s. Except she was sort talking about San Francisco and Los Angeles. As always, everything she says... I mean, again, <laughs> I don't think she should have said these words because she, she should predict the, the outcry. Well, but, yeah, but well, she, she, a, a, a she said we don't want to go, go down the same route as San Francisco and Los Angeles where some of the rough sleeping is a lifestyle choice. That's what she said. Yeah, but a skilled politician, if you were advising her, Julia... Yeah, she wouldn't just, say just, it. You would have told... You told her not to do it. And, yep. you know, when you're a government in trouble, you can't have yep. the government's message constantly sort of knocked off course by a Home Secretary who's not yep. skilled enough at the, in the media. No, I, I agree with you on I that. We've, think, been, we've been very critical of her for that as well. She's, she's her own worst enemy in that sense. Tim Montgomery, founder of Conservative Home. So appreciate you joining us. Thank you very much.